Here's our fuel supply, that, that uh, the grid there, and the sun. And today, like most days, it turned into a sunny day after all, so we actually probably made a lot of power today. The power we make today, we're going to use tomorrow. Um, power we charged up with last night, if we did, is the stuff we're going to use today. So the energy we're making today, uh, we'll use uh, the credits tonight, helping the grid out, uh, charging at nighttime. Uh, I want to clear up some misconceptions about how a serial hybrid, plug-in hybrid works. This is the Manzanita charger on the left. So this thing here can actually plug in via, via this wire. It has to be located in the back because in the front they didn't leave in enough space. So I had to put it in the back and we had to run the wire all the way through the car, you know, through here. So this wire then goes uh, into the power electronics unit here, which is mostly empty space and hooks up to the regenerative braking shunt. So that's, that's a pretty simple but elegantly beautiful trick so that when the power is on, the car thinks that it's going downhill and you can charge it up without using the magnet charger spot here. And this gives us a lot of advantages. But I want you to notice that most of the area in the car, is in the front of here used to be an engine and it was filled up with other stuff. They had to put this big old box here to make it look like there's something there. And we have all this junk over here and this junk over here, which doesn't have anything to do with the powering the car. So in here, we should have that charger in the back, should be right here. And there could be space too for a small 40, uh, 40 kilowatt generator. So we could fit a generator in here, an engine generator uh, that complied with smog. And we could put a battery charger over there and shrink this unit <laughs> down to what it should be and get rid of a lot of this other junk that's here, like the magnet charger input port and all the fans and things. A lot of this stuff in the here is just to support things that don't have any make any sense, like the magnet charger input. Now that would make this into an instant volt, an instant plug-in serial hybrid. Now the, the thing is, a lot of the engineers say that the, the plug-in hybrid would have to run until the batteries get empty and then the engine would start up and generate power <laughs> to run the car and also to charge the battery. But that just isn't so. That's not the way a plug-in serial hybrid has to work. We really don't ever charge the thing up to full unless we're going the long distance. You know, 51 miles is enough to go around, 51% is enough to go around 70 miles. That's about twice the average journey in the daytime. But we try not to bring it, you know, below 20 or below 10%. So, although we could, so in, in general, you know, we, we try to keep it, um, you know, I wouldn't go more than 40 miles today, for instance. So we see the temperature is really good and the, um, the, battery, the battery voltage is really good, 13.3 all the way across the pack. So this pack is happy. It's happy at 51.2%. Do I want the engine, if I had an engine generator on this, would I use it to charge the battery pack? No. Because I would charge the battery pack, I would charge the battery pack overnight. I wouldn't charge it in the daytime. I wouldn't charge it from gasoline. So engineers are never completely phony. You know, the, the question is, what what is it that they were trying to say when there's when they think that you have to charge the batteries up when they get low? So you know, what what is it that the engineers were trying to solve, or what problem do they see when they say that? Um, uh, they, I call them the phony engineers. But let's say the engineers that, that made a mistake. Uh, what are they trying to solve when they say that when the batteries get low, the, en the engine generator has to come on in a serial hybrid to charge the, to charge the car? Well, they think, uh, apparently, that the batteries have to be full for the car to run. So that's the idea. They're thinking that when the battery gets low, the generator comes on to charge the battery. That's because we always said that the generator could come on to charge the batteries and they probably just read that far and didn't do any further inquiries. But the thing is that the generator can come on either to charge the battery or to run the car directly. So we could take that uh, gen set and run the energy right into the, into the regenerative braking shunt and just run the car directly. The big question is, you know, why would they say that the batteries have to be full to run the car? Well, it may be because they're thinking that batteries must be full, but it really doesn't have to be that way. The, the batteries can be empty and the car can still run. 
and you really wouldn't want to use the genset to charge the batteries because that's extremely expensive. Now it so happens that these nickel metal hydride batteries do better when they're empty. So if I ran this car, let's say down to 20% full, right now the batteries are about 50%. If I ran it down to 20%, let's say, and the generator came on, I would not want the generator to charge the batteries. <laughs> I would want the generator to run the car directly through the regenerative braking shunt. So the generator wouldn't have to be big enough to both charge the batteries and run the car. And we say, why would they think that the batteries had to be full for the car to run? Well, maybe they're thinking of lead acid batteries, or maybe they're thinking of the Prius, or maybe they're thinking that the they maybe they're unfamiliar with regenerative braking and they think that you know the the end the batteries have to cycle all the time you don't have to charge the battery on the fly in fact you don't want to charge the battery on the fly you want the nickel metal hydride batteries the nickel batteries to run down preferably you'd set your battery management system or your and your engine generator management system uh, so that the the inverter would turn on the genset when the battery voltage got down to 20% So we'd shut off the battery and we'd run the generator and the generator would uh, run the car directly Now if there were excess energy that the generator generated then it could go into the battery or If there was a lot of regenerative braking, let's say we we're coming down a steep hill we could use that to charge the battery or we could shut off the generator. But it's it's a false engineering to say that, you know, I have to run the batteries down and then charge them up and then run them down and then charge them up. That's just not the way an electric car works. The electric car works so that you drive the car until the batteries are depleted in the daytime, then you bring it home and you charge it up slowly at nighttime is that's when the energy is the electricity is the cheapest at nighttime we don't want to charge it in the daytime I can charge it in the daytime I could hook up a generator and charge it in the daytime so that's that's the misconception I like to clear up some people are saying due to this deficient engineering that the batteries on a serial plug-in hybrid would cycle more than they would on an EV like this but they don't you know they'd be exactly the same you would choose your battery pack for your daily commute and that would be your you know what you do let's say a 60 mile pack you run it down to, to zero from, from or to 20 percent from whatever it is and then your genset would come on but usually you'd be back home you wouldn't ever need the genset so with people like me i'd get a 100 uh 100 mile pack like the toyota rav 4 ev and i'd there be a genset on there i'd take the genset off and i just run it as a regular ev and maybe that's why people don't want to make the Volt at all. They know that really a Volt is a regular EV and you just take off the genset and you have an EV.